Graphite is a new open source node-based non-destructive editor. Before we talk about what non-destructive means, we need to talk about what destructive design means. And in graphics design, we have generally like two main data types. We have ROS data, which is your general pixel-based data. So if you take a photo with your camera, that's ROS data. And we have vector data. Vector data is a sort of clean mathematical representation of your shapes. And with ROS data, you can do destructive operations, such as brushing or changing colors. And that happens on a, like basically just in memory representation. It's a table and you change the data. And for vector, you can also do operations on the vector data. For example, in this case, we cut out the second circle from the first circle. That's also a destructive vector operation. And in Graphite, we want to make this non-destructive. Non-destructive editing has, well, it's used in industry, but mostly in 3D applications. So free software like Houdini or Blender, they do use non-destructive editing to allow you to generate scenes and generate content. And they do this through a node-based approach. That's the second sort of buzzword I mentioned in the title or in the introduction. Node-based means that instead of destructively applying operation to a piece of data, we encode the operation in our document. So in this case, we have the smudge operation. So we have just an image, and we can do a smudge. In regular editing software, that would just apply the smudge, and it would change the pixels. If you do it in a node-based way, we can think of it as having an image node, which then feeds into the smudge node, which applies the operation. And the big advantage is that we basically encode the user's intent. And if the user wants to change, like at some point later in the editing process, they decide they wanted to change something about the source image. Maybe they didn't like the aspect ratio. Of course, this is just a placeholder, but if you have a proper photo you want to smudge, then you could you can no longer change the source image. With a node-based approach, we encode the operation that the user did, the smudging, and we can then recalculate how that would look with the new source image. And what we do in Graphite is that we, it's basically a toolbox for transforming user editing operations that you would find in any other like graphics editor into this node-based system. This is just a quick overview. This is a design mockup. We're not fully there yet. I'll show you live demos in a second. But one of the general concepts is that we have this sort of duality between the node-based editing, the procedural node-based editing, and regular editing, image editing tools that many users are familiar with. For one instance, we have the this uh, layer panel on the bottom right, which is like what most users are familiar with. And this is actually bijective to the graph representation in the middle. Like the, you can toggle this graph representation. I'll show you that in a second. But we can encode the entire artwork in, and look at it through both the node-based lens or the traditional editing lens. And, this allows us to have a familiar UX design and familiar user experience and also give the users all the power and tools they want. And this allows for some exciting possibilities. So let's say you want to build a trading card game. Trading card games are fairly standard. Like you have some, a title text, an image, maybe stats for the different objects on the card, like a nice frame around everything. 
that's something that you could like, perceivably, like, feasibly do in Graphite. You could build a pipeline in the editor which ingests a CSV file or like a row of a CSV file which contains the path to the source image, the title, and then you can use Graphite as a language to build this procedural construct which can be rendered out as a card for the trading game. And you could of course also turn this into a CLI application to do batch processing or automate workflows, general like templating. And it's and one of the nice features is that we can repack like you can package complex functionality you build in graphite and reuse that in, because we essentially we're essentially building a full programming language. The graphite project we're um, working on this for about four years now and we did choose Rust as our language of implementation and are quite happy with it because we are both target well we're first of all targeting the web because we want to have a we want to provide a good editing experience on all platforms and the easiest way to achieve that right now is to have it run on the web using WebAssembly and currently we're mainly focused on vector editing but we do have Rust integrations and we're aiming to extend that in the future. And we're essentially fusing two technologies. One of them is our node-based functional programming language, Graphene, and the Graphite Editor, which is the tool set that allows you to manip manipulate it. You can think of Graphite as the IDE for the Graphene language. And we will work on adding animations. I do also have a demo for you for animations, but yeah. Speaking of demos, uh, Graphite is an image editor, so you can do all your regular image editing operations. And it, if I draw a rectangle, what that ends up as is a rectangle which feeds through well, it, the rectangle tool operation is transformed into the node representation, which is a rectangle feeding through transform. We assign a fill. We can also change the fill to be something more visible. We add a stroke. And this is then shown to the user. If we, we can also use procedural features. In this case, this is the, our Christmas lights demo. I can select this and if I drag this out the Christmas lights follow along the string. This is one of the use cases for procedural editing and how that is implemented is pretty simple. We just take this line which is highlighted in blue. We then interpolate it using a spline. This is the spline interpolation and we then sample the spline along its length in different intervals and we copy this light bulb to the spline and that gives us this nice uh, snake feature where we can drag this and manipulate it. This can also be used to like this concept of proceduralism can also be extended to more advanced images. This, this, for example, is the Changing Seasons artwork. And if I use this slider, I can actually transform and morph between these two images. And I could, of course, also change the color, the gradient, if I want to, in this direction this would change the colors. And all this is, like this node graph is a bit more complicated, but still similar. I, oh, it's not 2024 anymore. 
So this is just, I can show you how this is made. Like, oh, first of all, so this numbers, this number counter is actually procedurally generated. This is just a seven segment display. I get a number input. And then this is a matrix of logical ors to convert the number into turn the segment on or off. And this allows you to build like a seven segment display within graphite and export that as a node. So that's just a node. I can feed a number in and get the image output. And that's generally just a use case or shows you the power of this system. And we're not just a vector editor. We do also support raster editing operations. This is a Mandelbrot, a Mandel, well, the Mandelbrot set. Yeah, you'll recognize this. And this is rendered live in graphite, where this is essentially just, we do render graphite. We, well, traditional image editors, you have to decide up front what the resolution of the final image will be. In graphite, we can only, we look at what the user currently sees, and we only render that at that resolution. And in a sense, the graphite editor is much more similar to game engine because we have this functional description of our application, in this case, Mandelbrot, feeds into like an artboard, which is the region we can see. And we then have to render every frame this node graph. And that's also one of the reasons why we use Rust to allow us to actually get away with re-rendering everything, every frame. And this is currently running in the browser, single-threaded. We are working on adding a, like a WGPU implementation. But it works pretty fine for just like a Mandelbrot zoom, which is not a special feature. It's just built into graphite. And you never have to, when you combine raster and vector, you don't have to rasterize the vector to be able to work with both data, data types because we can do that live at the desired resolution. I can also show you another quick little demo. Yeah, this one. <coughs> this is another example way on, of how you can sort of build reusable features No, no. Yeah. All right. Um, thanks a lot. I'll leave you with our way to find a slide. And if you do have questions afterwards, just come to me. I do have stickers for you if you want. And yeah, thanks a lot. Thank you very much for your talk.